Hey guys, welcome to Homeschool with me. So today we are going to be talking about the five most common myths of homeschooling. So let's dive right in. Number one thing I hear people tell me is, I can't teach my kids. I can't do that. I can't teach my kids. That is so not true on so many levels. Um, you're not just going to jump into schooling your kids without any resources. No one could do that. A teacher in a public school situation could not do that. They have resources, they have curriculums, they research. You are capable of doing this. Does it take more than just sending them to school? Of course it takes more. And if you decide to homeschool, it's worth it in the end. When I teach my kids, I'm not just teaching them just right out of my head things that I remember from when I was schooled. I have a curriculum that will actually spell out word for word what I am supposed to say and how I'm supposed to teach it. And it explains why. This is especially helpful in a subject that you may not be that great at, like me and spelling. I do all about spelling because it teaches her how to spell and I'm not relying on my own knowledge, which is lacking because I'm a terrible speller. So I'll link this below. You're not just teaching out of your own mind. You're gonna research, libraries are critical, all those kinds of things. Once you jump into it and you really learn how to build a unit study, which I'm gonna do a video on how to build a unit study, so subscribe so you don't miss it. But you learn how to do a unit study. You learn how to choose the right curriculums for your kids, so it works. The other thing is, that's very similarly related that I get all the time, my number two thing is, I wouldn't know what to teach my kid. I'm gonna forget something. And I always say, yeah, you're gonna forget something. That's just bound to happen. You're gonna forget something. There's gonna be a little gap that they didn't get necessarily from you that they're gonna miss. But what I know when I am teaching my own children is my goal is to teach them how to learn. So if they have a gap in their knowledge when they're in college and they're like, hey, I don't know this, then all you have to say is, I taught you how to learn. So go learn it. And that's the real key is, I am not gonna remember to teach them everything. That's impossible. And that's an unrealistic standard to put yourself at because kids that go to public school do not come out of public school knowing everything. They're not geniuses, and that's not what I'm aiming for either as a homeschool mom, but I do know that I need to teach my child to know when they need to learn something. And so that is something that, that you will impart to them. So if you miss something, it's okay because they're gonna know how to teach it to themselves. You're not gonna be perfect, and there's no way that you teach them everything and you don't forget it. So that's just a fear that you need to, because you are going to forget something. All of us are gonna forget something. We're not perfect. But it's okay because you're teaching them how to learn it themselves. The third thing I think I hear all the time from people is, I don't know how you have the patience to homeschool. I would kill my kids. And people say that to me all the time. I wouldn't have the patience to homeschool. I can't have my kids in my house all the time. That would drive me nuts. And there are days where that is totally true. There are days where they drive me bananas. But there are days where I get to see something click, the days that I see them figure something out, and those days, those days where I see that on their face, that nullifies the fact that I don't get to go to lunch with my girlfriends without my kids, and but I know them so intimately, and I know their struggles, and I see their successes. The kids are each other's best friends, and there's so many positives to that, that that outweighs the, yeah, my kids are with me all the time. Is that always perfect? No, I'm going to be real with you. No, it's not. It's not always perfect. There are definitely days where I'm like, what am I doing? And why did I sign up for this? But there are those days where I'm like, this is the best decision I've ever made and I wouldn't change it for anything. I think when you're about to jump into it, that seems like such a big issue where it's more just like a minor side issue to most homeschool moms. Yeah, I've had a bad day. They've been in my space all the time. But you get in your own rhythm. You get into that point where I do make my kids give me alone time. And I'll be like, mommy needs some time. And they know that means you need to go find something else to do on your own that's quiet and that's not bothering me. And sometimes I'll say that TV's okay. Sometimes I say you have to do something educational. Sometimes I say you have to go sit in your beds and read. Like, it just depends on the day and why I've hit my point. But we all have days like that. But I think they're less than you think they will be. Okay, the fourth thing is that your kids will not have friends. Now, this is an issue and I understand this. A lot of moms look at it and go, my kids in school. And that 
automatically my children will have friends because they go to school and that is true they're, they're gonna be around kids all the time they'll have their peers they'll have the people that they get along with so it is a little bit more of an effort as a homeschool family to make sure your kids have friends but they come naturally and the way they come naturally is you reach out into your homeschool community like I said in our how to start homeschooling one of the things you need to do is to get to know your homeschool community. Knowing your homeschool community will kind of get rid of that fear of them not having friends. My kids have tons of friends and the reason they have so many friends is because I put them into experiences where they gain friendships. We have friends that live down the street, they're still going to get along, when kids get out of school, kids are going to want to play. So they'll all go out and play together and your kids will still fit in. Your kids will have plenty of friends. Our fifth homeschooling myth would be your kids are going to miss out on things and I there are a few major milestones that I think a lot of people think of when they're older like prom school dances um, school plays when they're in elementary like having a science fair having all these things and and if you reach out into your homeschool community all of those are available to you around you I you just have to get involved and sometimes that means you're going to head up putting together a high school prom you're going to head up putting it together a science fair. You're going to have to head up a community group. You're going to have to head up those kinds of things. So it is a little bit more effort on your side. But I was homeschooled growing up, and I don't feel like I missed out on any of those things. And Malia has already been in three science fairs, and she's been in a choir. If I want to find a resource for my child that I feel like they're going to be missing out on, it is available. You just have to look or sometimes put it together yourself. So those things are available to you. And I think once you get to know your homeschool community better, you'll understand that they're available to you. Hey guys, thanks for sitting down with me today. Make sure you like this video if you want more videos like this. Comment below if you, have an, if you worry about something about homeschooling that you need to know. Is it a myth or is it a worry? Make sure and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on all the videos I'm going to be posting this week.